the story behind what has led to the 34th America's Cup being held in San Francisco is certainly noteworthy. And in the national bestseller, The Billionaire and the Mechanic by Julian Guthrie, expertly detailed. As a primer to the racing for the Cup, this is nonfiction that reads like a novel. Guthrie, an award-winning journalist with the San Francisco Chronicle, identified this compelling tale years ago, delivering history and drama in each chapter. Well, the story was so compelling for me for a lot of reasons. One, I found Larry Ellison fascinating, and I was given un kind of unprecedented access because he really liked the story. Um, I like underdog stories. People don't normally think of Larry Ellison as an underdog. And in this case, though, he very much was. Again, he loses twice, spends a lot of money, a lot of time. He can make the money back. He can't get the time back. And I liked um, the unlikely partnership between you know, the billionaire and the mechanic. Of course, we know the billionaire behind Oracle Team USA, but the mechanic, Norbert Byron, and the story of his role in helping bring the America's Cup to San Francisco is in its own right full of humanity and inspiration. He was the newly named Commodore of the Blue Collar Boating Club, the Golden Gate Yacht Club, uh, which is down the marina, down the road from the better known, more elite St. Francis. He learned, lo and behold, that Larry Ellison had had a falling out with St. Francis, and he was trying to save his sinking yacht club, sinking in debt. It was four $450,000 in debt and he thinks well why can't my little club be the sponsoring club so he reaches out to Larry Ellison to try to make that happen which of course does happen and propels the action in the book as along the way we get many different perspectives on what motivates not just the mechanic but also the billionaire upon losing two America's Cup campaigns leading up to the victory in 2010 someone asked him you know Larry is it worth a hundred million dollars to win the America's Cup and he said I don't know. I've never won the America's Cup, but I can tell you it's not worth $100 million to lose the America's Cup. So he had to kind of think again about, okay, I've lost these two times. It's been painful. It's been costly. Each campaign was around $100 million. And how do I come back and win this third time? So it's a soul searching uh, portrait of the guy. It's, you know, mistakes that were made and lessons that were learned. Uh, so I think in that way it's a very different portrait. So he figures out this formula for the 2010 America's Cup, the 33rd America's Cup, figures out how to, you know, who is the best skipper available, or the CEO, Russell Coots at that time, now the winningest skipper in America's Cup history. Their first hire is Jimmy Spithill, who goes on to become the youngest skipper ever to win the America's Cup. And they design this boat. One of my favorite parts of this book and this story is they design this boat, this trimaran, USA 17. People talk about the boats today, the AC 72s, you know, being crazy space age, you know, flying machines. And uh, they are different because they're hydrofoiling, obviously. But USA 17, the trimaran that won the America's Cup in 2010, was a boat the likes of which had never been seen. A boat that led the way to great triumph and the eventual decision to host the 34th America's Cup on the Bay. He wanted to bring it here because the natural amphitheater of San Francisco Bay is a pretty spectacular place, as we're seeing. And he wanted it to be accessible, where the boats are right there, where they're flying by. Because in the history of the America's Cup, you had to go out on a spectator boat and you had to see these kind of dots on the horizon. The goal was to make it more accessible, to bring maybe sports fans, but who are not yet sailing fans, into the fold. Which brings to mind the question, what's next for the America's Cup and what's next for the story that's shared in this best-selling book? In terms of where it goes, well, it's been option for film, so people, I hope, will be able to see the fe feature film of my book. But I think that, you know, the bigger question is where does the America's Cup go from here? And, you know, if Oracle defends, if Oracle holds the trophy, Team USA, then the question is, does it stay in San Francisco? Or does it go to Hawaii? Larry happens to own a certain island there. Um, what will the boats look like? You know, there are some traditionalists who want the monoholes back, for instance. Um, although I don't know if that's gonna happen given now this attraction to the speed element. But, you know, how much of a scaling back will, will there be? You know, Larry recently said that he definitely wants more countries involved. You know, he wants China and South Africa and Germany and all of these teams. But I hope that it's something that catches on in America because I didn't start out uh, with this book with my research being a fan of the America's Cup. I really love the story of Larry going after the cup and his unlikely partnership with his radiator repairman. And then I love the stories of the sailors and all. But I've become a fan of the America's Cup because of how 
difficult it is to win. And again, the human drama that goes into it and the dreams that are all going to converge, you know, on the waters of San Francisco Bay starting September 7th.